Buddhist stories, the hundred-headed fish, the peaceful heaven being's deeds, and the trial streams a heaven gatherings, part 3 of 8, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on August 9, 2015, in Roquebrun, Cap Martin, France. So Catila, Catile listened to his mother. Oh God, what a mother is for! And then whenever he discussed, you know, or debated with the monks, and then when he lost, of course, on this topic, then he screamed and scolded them and degraded them. You are a stupid person. You are just animals. You know nothing. And then he called them like you, just like a dog's head, you know. Uh, pig's head, or uh, this animal's head, or that animal's head, meaning stupid, no brain, little brain, something like that, yeah? So every time he was very, very fiercely uh, scolding the monks like that. In this phase of the story, the Buddha reminded everyone that, Anand, you should know that Katile, because of his uh, wickedness inside his heart and has been yelling and, and defaming the monks at that time. Therefore, he has become a fish with hundred different animals' head on his body. And then Anand asked the Buddha, praised the world honor one, Katile, when will he be able to liberate himself, to be liberated from this fishy, you know, a hundred head fish. So the Buddha said, Anand, you should know, even if I use my Buddha wisdom eye to check, it's a long, long, long time still. Yeah. Maybe in the Chento era, when the Buddha comes out, when 1,000 Buddhas already passed away, meaning after him, eh? and then thousand Buddhas also come out to the world and then pass away already? Still not yet. Still this Atile will not be liberated from this kind of uh, incarnation as a fish with hundred heads. After I and all the Bichu heard that, I mean Anand, all of us, you know, <laughs> had goosebumps and trembled with fear. Yeah. Also, we're feeling so sorry, so pitiful. And we all said, Oh, please, all beings, take care of your actions, your speech, and your thoughts. Be very careful what you think, what you say, what you do. Always be good, do good, think good, yes. After the Buddha and the Sangha talked with each other as thus, or the 500 uh, fishermen and uh, 500 uh, um, cowboys, they were all also very scared. They all knelt down, put their palms together, and wanted to become monks under his guidance. Yes. So, of course, the Buddha say, Welcome, be chills. Mm. So he had another 1,000 <laughs> monks. Wow! <laughs> the river bank is Big, huh? <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, how can they, you know, they sit all together like that and kneel in front of him? A thousand people kneel in front of him at the same time, including other many thousands of monks already kneeling there. Understand? Maybe we should find a river bank somewhere. <laughs> yeah, and we just buy a generator to get electricity. But in that case, can we can we have internet? <laughs> Broadband like this, uh, in order to broadcast the whole world or not? No, huh? Yes, no, no, yes, yes? Maybe? Maybe? Yeah. How? Wireless. Wireless? Uh huh. You mean the chip? The chip? Uh huh. Okay. Everywhere, I mean uh, Asia also? 
in Asia, in some countries. Mm. Or here, because we have a cable, you know, yeah. uh, official connection internet. But if we have just internet card, internet chip, is that good enough? Uh, I don't know. Uh, in one of the countries where there's no electricity or water, I told you, we have internet chip, but it's so difficult, so slow, just to download a little page, one page of information. Uh, picture, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> and have to go all the way on the road, not on my mountain, cannot. Have to go all the way down to the main big, not really big road, but a country road for that community. And maybe you can, yeah. And if I want to telephone, sometimes I have to go. <laughs> oh no, it's not okay. <laughs> I go all over the place. I'm looking at the telephone, cannot even talk. <laughs> keep looking, keep looking for the bar. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. And if I text, sometimes I told you already. If I for, if I'm too excited or, or forget, or my dog comes wow wow, and then I forget, I push the wrong button, everything gone. <laughs> But that's not too bad. The button sometimes I try to remember. What if those, uh, you know, iPod, I, iPhone, just breathe and it's gone? <laughs> you know, like I look here and I scratch my head, then it's gone. <laughs> just wave your hand, you know, then it's gone. <laughs> oh, no, I exaggerate. I, I exaggerate it. But it's so difficult, you know. <laughs> Normally you just swipe your hand and then something changes. I sometimes I don't know. I, I just want to scratch here. <laughs> the, the phone thing, I swipe my hand, and then everything's gone. I have to begin all over again. And it was already f difficult for me to begin before. You know, I did learn some computer before. You know, a little bit how to before when we had SMTV. You know, Supreme Master TV. I I have to check most of the the news and stuff. You know, when I can. Yeah. So I learned how to take out the information, and then, but I couldn't send it back. <laughs> so, so I had to write it down. Okay, page one, paragraph two, you know. And then I write the whole sentence and I put the correction on it. And then after I collected all the corrections, then I asked one of your brothers to come and send it. All right. And these one thousand people, five hundred fishermen and five hundred cowboys. Uh, follow the Buddha became monks, and not too long afterwards, they cleansed all their karma and they uh, attained arahant yeah, level. Mm. For the sake of uh, the big assembly, the Buddha uh, taught them again mm. about the four noble truths. Okay, like to be born, to die, to be old, and to suffer during the lifetime, and how to erase the suffering, the path to erase the suffering, yeah? Okay? That's a, another long story. <laughs> like one of the, the A, A ways of purification I told you before, that's one of the ways to erase suffering yeah, and not to be born again. Or to be born but be uh, in a very, very high position, prosperous, happy, happy, etc. Hmm? Because if you keep the precepts, then the precepts will, will avoid you making uh, bad karma in the future. Yeah? For example, if you keep the precept of not harming others, not killing, then life, life after life, it depends on how many lives or how clean you keep the precept, you will not get sick. Okay, you might die, of course, one day, but during the lifetime you won't get sick. Uh, or if you keep the precept of non-stealing, then nobody, no robber will ever touch your house. For example, like that. Okay? Yeah. Every precept has a consequence. Yeah? A good, good, good karma to bring with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody wants to hear some more stories? Yes. Everybody. Yes. How many? Right hands. Mm. <laughs> okay. This is a better story. <laughs> For a change, okay, huh? Uh, yeah, and then maybe after I read that. Thus I have heard, it's a story from Anand, computer again. Yeah. <laughs> One time the Buddha stayed in Save country, in the golden garden of uh, Kapkodok, and the prince Kida, remember? Remember the garden? 
Yes or no? Yes. How many yes? Only three, four? <laughs> the garden of the Prince Kida. Yeah. That the billionaire has to use a gold to gold bricks. To pave it. Yeah, gold brick. Gold bars to pave it. If he wants to buy that garden. Why bother? You know, in Africa five million square meters, only five hundred thousand euros. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> if he knew he would go there and buy instead. <laughs> Instead of taking all the gold reserves from your bank and pave that garden, he would go to Africa or some other country that's cheaper, you know, Siberia, whatever, yeah? Mm. <laughs> it's cheaper, right? Yes. Yeah. In some of the countries, they give you land for free yeah, so that you go develop their land. I know one of it, uh, not, not Venezuela, somewhere nearby, not Honduras. Uh, I forgot I was there before, I forgot. Belize? Huh? Belize? A Belize, for example. They give you land for free. Yeah. But over there they don't have soy sauce, they don't have. <laughs> <laughs> they little things, you know. They sell small, small in a small little hut. Even Chinese shop, I asked, do you have any tofu? Mm. <laughs> So I said, what do you cook around here? We cook whatever the land offers. If they want to buy tofu, sometimes they have to go across to go to Mexico mm. or America. You know. <laughs> okay, maybe you go to Belize, huh? Ask the government to give us some free land. Mm. <laughs> then we'll bring tofu, soya sauce, we'll bring everything inside, everybody can enjoy together. <laughs> All right. I don't know, it's not like you just have land, you must also have some affinity with it, yeah? And any land has to offer us some freedom, you know, to freedom of speech, to gather without hindrance. Otherwise, it's not about land, huh? Hmm. Okay, this time we are going to heaven, not on earth anymore, okay? <laughs> this chapter is about uh, a heaven called or Tân Cư Thiên, maybe, I think, uh, very uh, peaceful, you know, peaceful uh, heaven, yeah. If it is according to this world, means peaceful heaven. Yeah. Thus I have heard, at one time the Buddha, uh, in the same country, Save, in the golden garden of the Prince Kida. At that time, one day about evening, suddenly there was a beam of light from the heaven shining down onto the whole garden. And inside this great shining light, there was one being, very big, very handsome, very strong. And his body emitted like a diamond kind of aura. And he flew down inside where the Buddha uh, resided. He was down in front of Buddha, and then he walked around the Buddha three times, and then went back in front of Buddha, knelt there, knelt in front of the Buddha, and said, Praised be the Buddha. I am from the heaven of peace. I have heard that you came down to the planet Earth to save beings and bring them blessings also from heaven. I thought it is very rare that the Buddha appears first, so I am here with the utmost respect and sincerity. Uh, please uh, accept my offering tomorrow, that I can uh, offer, you know, water and uh, a vegan diet. <laughs> water for bath, yeah? In India, many thousand monks. That's why the Buddha, one of the precepts for the monks is you don't take a bath more than once every half a month, twice a month, yeah. just to save the water, you know? Just like here, you, you can't bathe every day, huh? Yeah, when you need, really, but not everybody come and shower every day, my God. <laughs> so we use a dry cleaning system, remember? Yeah, I do the same, huh? I do the same. 
But even if I take a shower, I, I use a bucket, a kind of low bucket and round, standing there so that all the water runs inside there. And I use it to flush the toilet. <laughs> and I wash my hands also inside. And then I use it. Yeah. So no problem. He pleaded with the Buddha and the Sangha to accept his offering of water for bath, shower, as well as uh, vegan uh, food. Yeah. So the Buddha praised him that he had such a sincerity, uh, wanting to do meritorious deeds. So he accepted. The Buddha accepted. So this being flew back to his house. No, his home in heaven. <laughs> And he brought all the beautiful food and drinks from heaven down to earth. Yeah. And then he brought a lot of uh, facilities or anything that um, facilitates the shower and the bath. Yeah, he brought it all down. And then the water, he even he brought all the clothes, you know, bath, robes, house, everything, yeah, from heaven down. And then he even manifested many bath houses, yeah, many shower houses, many rooms. And then he made the water already mixed well, not cold, not hot, yeah, just fine. <laughs> With a thermometer, check it out. <laughs> How many degrees is good, yeah. And then also, uh, these things even brought these uh, uh, grasses to brush your body. Uh, they use it kind of brush. Different. Maybe it's, they say grass to brush, but probably special grass, just like we use a brush nowadays. And then he even uh, brought down uh, oil, yeah, like body cream, first class, <laughs> from heaven's um, supermarket, yeah, everything there. Mm, okay. And then after he arranged everything, he came and invited the Buddha to take a shower. Of course, the Shangha also, huh? Yeah, maybe. And then after that, the Buddha came back to his own room. And then he came to the Buddha and said, Praise be the world, honor one. The vegan meal is all ready. Please come and enjoy. So after the Buddha and all the Shangha finished their bath, yeah, uh, put back their uh, clothes and everything, they went out and enjoyed the vegan meal. Mm. And then they went back. After that, toy means anan, yeah, means I, I mean anan, uh, came in front of the Buddha and asked again, how come no, no other Sangha ever asked him? Always anan asked. <laughs> I guess other people don't dare, you know, so they uh, put down a set, uh, a notice, anan, go ask <laughs> For me, yeah. You are the assistant of Buddha. Go out. Okay. Buồn ngồi bên sông cửa, nhìn mây nước ngoài xa, nghe tiếng người trước ngõ, ngỡ chàng về thăm 